Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is December 3, 2021, and I'm back with another commentary video for you. This one I found fairly disturbing. It's uh, Richard Ojeda speaking for rebel headquarters associated with the Young Turks about war with China, and it's pretty belligerent. We'll get into that in a minute. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. I don't run ads on this channel, so that's the only support I get. All right, so this video is disturbingly belligerent, and I mean, I think we all know that the Young Turks made kind of a hard right turn um, several years ago after they got $20 million from the Democratic Party, and the difference is night and day. They were never great, now they're absolutely awful, though. I do a whole series on this channel you may be familiar with, Hanging with the Sock Dem Gang, in which I take, you know, Kyle Kalinske and Humanist Report clips and then comment on them from more of a Marxist perspective, which is, of course, our perspective here at Socialism for All. TYT, I wouldn't even put in the Sock Dem Gang category. I mean, I probably will put it in that playlist, but they're more just like mainstream Democrats rather than even progressive Democrats at this point. And I think that this clip will tell you all you need to know. So I'm going to play at least the first half and then probably jump in with some commentary and we'll finish the whole thing. It's only about four minutes in total. We're witnessing one of the largest shifts in global geostrategic power that the world is witnessing. And if we, the United States military, uh, don't do a fundamental change to ourselves in the coming 10 to 15 to 20 years, uh, then we're going to be on the, the wrong side of uh, a conflict. Then there's the potential U.S. clash with China over Taiwan. Is it your belief that China is preparing to make a move on Taiwan in the near future? The Chinese are clearly and unambiguously building the capability to provide those options to the national leadership if they so choose at some point in the future. Um, but near future, probably not, but anything can happen. U.S. officials tell NBC News in war games simulating an American defense of Taiwan U.S. forces have not been able to win a conventional war with the Chinese. Do we have the capability to defend Taiwan? We absolutely have the capability. There's no question about that. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and this is what leadership looks like, folks. This is why our Constitution is written the way that it is. We are one of a, the very few countries in the world where a civilian authority, also known as Congress and the executive branch, oversees our military. The President of the United States is called the Commander-in-Chief, and that's for a reason. The buck stops with him. General Milley is a lifelong military man, and he has seen it all. He is as poised as they come, and when he speaks, nations listen. This is likely to be the most serious foreign policy decision President Biden has to make. What to do about China? How do we handle them? And when do we show our U.S. might? Make no mistakes about it, folks. I spent the majority of my life in the military. And if push comes to shove, I can guarantee you that there is no force on the planet that can compete with the United States military. Okay, so let's pause it there. There is really a lot going on in this clip. First of all, I did a clip about war with China over Taiwan several weeks ago. That was coming off of Paul Cockshot's video about China-U.S. war scenarios and how it really looks like the U.S. would not be able, really in any kind of scenario, to take on China. I mean, over Taiwan, that's the most likely cause, but basically the U.S. and the U.K. are trying to uh, put nuclear submarines down in Australia, and the Aussies seem to be all too willing to be lapdogs of the U.S.-U.K. alliance. Why would they be doing this? Well, obviously, it is to intimidate and threaten China, or at least to vainly try to. Uh, if you want to check out that video, I'll put a link to it in the description. But anyway, China let's do a little bit of background, is seeking unification. Obviously, we went through the whole Hong Kong thing recently and all the right-wingers coming out for Hong Kong. Well, what's the significance of China? China had its revolution back in the late 1940s, after World War II. Um, this is a long story, but basically, in the 19-teens, the last Chinese dynasty fell, so that was the end of the monarchy. And then the two contenders for who was going to rule China next were the Nationalists, more of a capitalist party, and then the Communist Party of China. And that, of course, you know, Mao Zedong, maybe you've heard of him, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so they fought 
through the 20s against the warlords and then the communists and the nationalists fought with each other and then the Japanese imperialists invaded in the 30s and then both the nationalists and communists were fighting with them and then World War II ended, Japan was defeated and then finally the communists and nationalists in China had their final fight and this was the Chinese Civil War and the communists won. Well, what happened to the nationalists? They got driven to Taiwan. So China has stated all along that Taiwan is part of China. It's just that the People's Republic of China, that is headed, that's mainland China, headed by the Communist Party of China. Please do not call them the CCP. That is not their name. It's the CPC. Anyway. Uh, meanwhile, the Republic of China, that was the capitalists, retreated to Taiwan. And for quite a while, until the early 1970s, the United Nations actually recognized the losers of that civil war, the Republic of China, the nationalists, as the official representatives of China. And then after the early 70s, the PRC, the communists, uh, communist-led China anyway, uh, they became the official representative in the UN of China. And ever since, the fate of Taiwan, as far as being this reactionary holdout island, has been in jeopardy. Well, now China's saying, look, we want to complete our revolution. We want to reunite all of this territory and basically fucking deal with it. Like most countries that have a socialist revolution, uh, you know, there's not some island of nationalists that just persists for decades and decades. Like you guys had your fun. Now it's over. Uh, and so basically what China is thinking is maybe at some point they're going to fly military jets over Taiwan and reunification is just going to proceed. So as you heard in that clip, uh, you know, the United States is definitely wanting to go to bat <laughs> for Taiwan. And of course, the United States supports reaction and counter-revolution all over the world. That's kind of the U.S.'s thing. And that's also why we socialists in the imperial core need to be anti-imperialist and do everything that we can to resist empire and oppose war so that socialists in other countries can keep on with their revolutions without the United States interfering. This was the same thing when the USSR was going. They needed help from European socialists within the capitalist imperialist countries in Europe to try to keep their governments from attacking the USSR. Well, it's the same thing. So here we are with TYT basically hyping up war with China. There's more on that message, but who is this General Milley? And I want to highlight here, I don't think I mentioned it before, the name of this clip is General Milley gives urgent warning about China. Now, there's nothing urgent about that at all. China is trying to complete their revolution. The United States just doesn't like it. And of course, TYT, now that they're fully attached, I mean, Cenk Uger, you know, the head of TYT, uh, he was a Republican, really, who just left the Republican Party because of, like, torture, when all those reports of torture and the CIA black sites and the Abu Ghraib prison, all that stuff came out in the 2000s. So, I mean, basically you've got a conservative guy who the Republicans move a little too far right for him, becomes a Democrat. Okay, well, I mean, that's fairly typical. Um, you know, and there's just horrible messaging from them. I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't want to make this all about, you know, TYT's long descent into the pit that they're now in. But anyway, this is not, uh, contrary to what they've said, not really that progressive at all of a uh, news outlet or commentary outlet, even less so in the last few years. So what is this urgent message? Y you can hear in that clip that the narrator says that the U.S. military people they've spoken with said that the U.S. could not win in all the scenarios that they ran in a conventional war with China. Now, I don't know if they're mentioning conventional war as opposed to nuclear war deliberately or, you know, I don't know. That's unnerving to me as well that they're even like, well, we can't win a conventional war, dot, dot, dot. I mean, they're not saying the rest, but is that a hint? It's concerning. Anyway, but like I said, that aligns with what I was saying before about the Paul Cockshot video about, you know, this whole thing of putting submarines in Australia is futile. Even if you have them, there's really no scenario where the U.S. comes out of a large-scale confrontation with China 
looking good. I mean, the U.S. economy is already crashing. It has been since 2008. It's totally unstable. The U.S. has been doing just open war and invasions for the last 20 years. The U.S. just withdrew from Afghanistan, for Christ's sake. Like, you think you're going to take on China? Anyway, uh, you know, and there's just all kinds of reasons that they try to blockade China. Well, a lot of the U.S. economy depends on China, so that's going to ruin the U.S. Anyway, China could withstand all of this, and the U.S. couldn't, is the bottom line. So, that's that. So, what is all this? Mark Milley, uh, this is a guy who recently tangled with Trump on China. I don't know if you remember the headlines from Trump's last year in office, but... This is the general who was working with Bob Woodward of the Washington Post and Robert Costa, and uh, they wrote a book, Peril, and basically they were saying that Trump was trying to go to war with China. Trump denied it and said that the guy... Anyway, that's a whole bunch of drama I'm not trying to get into here. But what exactly is it? I mean, that guy's saying Trump's trying to go to war with China, and then meanwhile he sounds like he wants to go to war with China, or at least he wants to build up the U.S. military again to try to see if they can take on China. And then the TYT tool, so who's this guy? Richard Ojeda. He ran for president in the primaries uh, for like five minutes one time. He was a U.S. Army major who then, after he retired, went and did ROTC in high schools. So he's a military recruiter. Um, and he is on record as having stated that where he's from, I think it's in West Virginia, you know, you got three options. You can either go to the coal mines, you can sell drugs, or you can join the military. And he joined the military. Okay, so I'm not going to fault every single person who gets the, quote, economic draft in that way. But how about, I don't know, maybe learning from it and not going on to try to suck other impressionable youth into it. You know, I mentioned we in the Imperial Corps need to be anti-imperialists. Well, counter-recruitment work is part of it. This guy is literally like a military recruiter doing ROTC in high schools. So what is he saying here? He's saying that Millie is real leadership, quote unquote. Why? So what is the problem with China? They don't say. They just say that they're going to bat for Taiwan, except that they can't. Let me play that clip again. U.S. officials tell NBC News in war games simulating an American defense of Taiwan, U.S. forces have not been able to win a conventional war with the Chinese. So back to Ojeda, never is this actually acknowledged, nor do they even really say why they're talking about this entire subject in the first place. Let's play some more of the clip. I, I mean, again, this just seems to be like ramping up general enthusiasm for going to war with China. This is insanity. Not only is it not good militarily, haven't people had enough of U.S. imperialist aggression? I mean, the U.S. has been picking on small countries for the last 30 years, whether it's Panama, Iraq, on and on and on. But it's burnt out. It's spent. I mean, you remember back in the 2000s, even when the uh, soldiers who were getting called in to go to Iraq and Afghanistan, they were like, they just kept getting stuck over and they just were told you can't leave over and over and over again. The, they got nothing. The country's getting hollowed out and you're trying to get people excited at quote rebel headquarters for just a, an indefinite, I mean, a war with China, this would be at least a four or five year prospect and how many people would die. But they're not even talking about the why. Let's get into that. Our capabilities are years ahead of our rivals. But notice how I said rivals and not enemies. You see what General Milley is saying without actually coming out and saying it? He knows what we all know, and that is that we could defeat China, but the cost... Okay, one more time. U.S. officials tell NBC News in war games simulating an American defense of Taiwan, U.S. forces have not been able to win a conventional war with the Chinese. It would be too much for us to bear. And I'm not just talking about the financial cost, but the human cost. A war is out of the question, and both sides realize this. But this doesn't let China do whatever they want. This is why this is such a difficult position for President Biden to be in. China has its eyes set on Taiwan, and we as Americans need to pay attention to this. Why? Why should we care? For starters, we fought many wars defending democracy and fighting communism. Okay, my head is spinning because this thing is all over the place. He's like, 
Milley is a leader. He's saying we could beat China if we wanted to, but the cost would be too high. No, literally you can't. This is just bluster. It's just talking big to make yourself feel better. And then all of this, you know, China has its eyes set on Taiwan. This is spoken like a true American who has absolutely no fucking idea what they're talking about, about any other country in the world. And then we go on to the U.S. has fought many wars for democracy. This is your, quote, progressive news source telling you this. Can you name one? I can't. Name a war that the United States fought for democracy. Don't we all know that that's a sham? Don't, doesn't everyone know that that's a sham? And again, you know, these are the same people who are like, uh, no war in Iraq, no blood for oil. Okay, fine, no blood for oil. But do you think that this is somehow different? Do you think that the United States suddenly grew principles other than seeking super profits for giant corporations? You really think that there's some kind of principled opposition to China here? I mean, he tries to put a fine distinction on it of like, well, they're rivals, not enemies, but we hate communists. Like, it's just a mass of contradictions. They're trying to ramp up support among self-styled progressives, unfortunately naive enough to be caught in the TYT rebel headquarters sphere. But make no mistake, this is nothing but just generic war propaganda. That is what it is. This isn't progressive. They are lying to you, period. And again, this is coming from a guy who for four or five years worked after he got out of his active duty in the military. He went and helped to recruit more impressionable youth in economically depressed areas into the military. He didn't learn a fucking thing. He is just a dog of war. That is what this guy is he's an imperialist stooge he is his whole thing is trying to pull impressionable youth into the u.s war machine there's nothing progressive about fighting for the u.s military you will kill and die for corporate profits that's it you take your soul you tear it into little pieces you go murder innocent people so that oil companies can have bigger profits that's what it's about being in the U.S. military. That's what the U.S. has been about. I mean, since the end of World War II, the U.S. tried to pick up for the former fallen colonial powers, the British Empire, the French Empire, and the Vietnam War is one of the consequences of that. This is the U.S. It, it's not a good thing. It's not progressive. The U.S. military does not do positive things. They tell you that they're fighting for democracy and freedom, it's a lie. And, and this guy has worked directly for them in recruitment work. That's what this video is. And TYT is giving it to you. Taiwan is a democracy and they are people that just want to live their lives. They are an independent nation that want nothing to do with China. Remember General Milley nor myself is advocating for war with China or Taiwan, but we need to keep a close eye and make sure China knows that the United States is watching. If they ever decide to actually invade Taiwan, this would only be the beginning. Other sovereign nations would be next. Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, they all- So again, Taiwan is where the reactionaries fled after the Chinese Civil War and it is not an independent nation. It's part of China. China is just formally seeking reunification at this point. As far as the rest of what he just said, that other nations will be next, independent sovereign nations. This is literally Richard Nixon domino theory from <laughs> like 50 years ago. That's what TYT is giving you. They're giving you anti-communist domino theory straight out of the Cold War. Look at the United States as a country. Look at what the United States has done in those last 50 years. This system isn't savable. It's not reformable. All it spreads is poverty, war, and death. And actually, in the era of COVID, we can add definitely disease to that list. I mean, also before COVID, but that's what U.S. capitalism, U.S. imperialism offers. They're playing this patriotic mega music in the background. Do you 
really not expect more from your, quote, progressive media than this. This is just straight out warmongering bullshit. It's couched in the lies of any military recruiter. Oh, well, we're not saying this, but we got to keep an eye on it. They are chomping at the bit because China, what they want is to not have any counterpoint to what the U.S. is doing. They don't want any other model out there. They want the U.S. to be the only game in town so that they can drive standards as low as they possibly can and to keep profits as high as they possibly can. And where do those profits come from? They come from exploitation, other people's suffering, pillage, murder, and war. That's where it comes from. That's what this guy is stumping for. This is what TYT is putting on their network. I mean, are there people still ignorant enough out there to believe that the U.S. military is, quote, spreading democracy? Is there any progressive in the world who thinks that? And if not, why do you tolerate this from a supposedly progressive outlet? This is nothing but imperialist warmongering propaganda. The U.S. military is a plague on the world. All they do is go around the world and spread suffering, subjugation. They murder people's families. They drone totally innocent people who have absolutely nothing to do with any kind of armed conflict. But you think that they're going to be for peace and democracy and justice. This isn't the 50s anymore. No one believes this at this point. This is just straight up blue MAGA Kool-Aid shit. And really, I I'm curious to see if there's going to be anybody in the comments defending this video. I have invested interest in ensuring that Taiwan remains an independent state. Nothing scares communist dictators more than religion. And that is why the religious clerics in countries like China, Russia, and North Korea, and many others, are the ones that are closely monitored and punished whenever they get out of line. This is absolute bottom-of-the-barrel reactionary propaganda aligning with the most backward elements in any population to try to hold back social progress and to try to make one of the more successful countries, one of the more successful efforts at escaping U.S. imperialism and in building up a cooperative alternative for the world. They're trying to rein them back in and break them down so that there is no opposition to U.S. imperialism. That is all this is about. So you're a progressive out there. What do you think about the mega churches in the United States? Do you think that they're a progressive or a reactionary force? Do you think that they are taking social issues forward or backward? So obviously backward, right? Go watch Jesus Camp. This has been really firmly established for quite a while, the moral majority under Reagan. It's how the Republicans have been able to prop themselves up through those critical years of the 70s, 80s, 90s by aligning with religious bigots. Well, that's exactly what this guy is proposing right here. This is how imperialism works to stop revolution and to counter revolutions. That's all they're trying to do here, period. Also, aside from a few scare words like communist dictator, what actually has this guy put up for evidence? Nothing. He's just trying to bowl you over with the music in the background and everything else. Put up or shut up. They have nothing. You know what the U.S. has in its track record? Well, I mentioned it before. War, suffering, poverty, disease, and death. Just misery. That's what the U.S. is really good at spreading. Just look around our country. I'm in the U.S. as probably you are. A lot of the audience is. And especially if you're listening to TYT, I'm sure you're in the United States. Nobody else is going to listen to that shit. Well, look around. What do you see? I see rampant homelessness, job insecurity, uh, underemployment, unemployment, people not being able to buy houses, people in apartments that cost $2,500, $3,000 a month for just like a very basic situation to keep a roof over their heads. This is what this guy wants to spread around the world because that's all the U.S. military does is they break down countries resistance to empire and they just try to pull them in so that the u.s corporations and other allied countries to the u.s their companies too can go in there rape the raw materials exploit the labor set up sweatshops and then funnel the profits into private bank accounts back in the u.s or western europe wherever it is that they live that's what it's about 
So anyway, TYT, this is to me really just astounding, like shocking. This is, but again, this is the Democratic Party. This is when you get in bed with the Democratic Party, what you get. So I say on this channel, after 2008, we had Occupy in 2011. And that was great. Uh, there were a lot of problems with Occupy, but people got out. They started to articulate their problems and air their grievances publicly. And people realized, oh, hey, these are really shared problems. Capitalism is the problem. People started talking about that again, because it is. And people put things on the agenda, the housing crisis, the medical crisis, the student debt crisis, on and on. Lots of basic problems the entire working class was having. And then, you know, Occupy, it came, it went, Bernie Sanders came along. Okay, great. Amplified the message. But unfortunately, he funneled it into the Democratic Party, which is this shit you're seeing on the screen. The Democratic Party is an imperialist party, which has been working hand in glove with the Republican Party for decades. Both parties are owned by the 1%. They each lean to one side to play to slightly different bases in the population. The Republicans are more overtly socially reactionary and they want more of a low wage economy. It's like the vestiges of the old Southern slave economy updated to the 21st century. It's more of those kind of values. The Democratic Party does stand for a uh, more advanced kind of capitalism, kind of higher wage, a little bit more unionized, things like that. But both of them essentially are imperialist parties who do not want any opposition to capitalism itself. And that's where we come in. We are trying to build a socialist movement and you're not going to build it within the Democratic Party. You're not going to build it within a party that is owned top to bottom by corporations and big banks and other major capitalists. What the working class needs to do is to pursue unrestricted class struggle. We need to experiment with all kinds of techniques and find what's going to be effective for us. The Democratic Party, on the other hand, is a straitjacket. They barely let you even get anything off the ground. Bernie Sanders was able to come in as an independent and use the Democratic Party as kind of a sounding board, a, a platform. But when push came to shove, he couldn't get anything done. He said, we're going to totally transform the Democratic Party. And it's been five years since he said that. And really, that hasn't happened at all. Biden isn't living up to any of his very meager promises, $15 an hour minimum wage. He had a public option on his website, Joe Biden did, didn't mention it once. When was the last time you even heard somebody mention Medicare for all? This is what the Democratic Party does, and it's not a recent thing. It's been doing it for decades, like since forever. <laughs> I mean, after World War II, right after the score between the different imperialist countries was settled, the United States turned on all the socialists who had helped to stop the fascists, which was just another faction of capitalists, and started to crush them, whether it was the Cold War against the Soviet Union, which really did the heavy lifting in World War II, or whether it was the domestic labor movement, which was full of socialists, communists, anarchists, actual anti-capitalist radicals. The Democratic Party said, thank you very much and then shat on our heads and locked us in a closet. And that's been the story since. You had some rebellions, like in the 60s, the civil rights struggle and the new left. But the Democrats just, they use it as much as they can and they co-opt what they can when they need it to just win elections. But they don't really take any of the heart of the struggle. They cut the heart out. They take the window dressing. And you get what we have now. 40 years of neoliberalism hollowing out all the economic rights that previous generations won through intense struggle. And yeah, those were not run-of-the-mill Democrats. The run-of-the-mill liberal Democrats were standing in the way. It was won by the radicals in the trenches, in the mass movements, and they're hollowing it out. So we're now 40 years into neoliberalism, maybe 45 years, depending on where you start counting from. And where is it? The social safety net gone because they used it. They threw it away. It's all about maintaining capitalism for them. It's all about maintaining super profits. If they have to make concessions once in a while, they will. But as long as they stay in power, they're setting the terms 
What socialism is about is saying, hey, if we, the working class, can win concessions, we could just as easily, with a little bit more of a push, win actual power. Then we don't have to get concessions because power will be in our hands. This is what they're so afraid of, and this is why this fucking imperialist stooge, this murderer for empire, this economic hitman that you see on the screen right here, that's what he's trying to hype you up about to go against China. So, yeah, I think there's another minute of this. Let's see what else he's going to try to push on us. China wants to overtake the United States as the world's dominant superpower, and General Milley has lived his entire adult life making sure that that never happens. Under the Trump administration, the Department of Defense was not working with the Department of State, and as a military man, I can assure you that that is very dangerous. General Milley on multiple times spoke up in defense of the State Department, and of course, Trump being the idiot that he is, he did not listen. But thankfully, we now have a new president one with decades of foreign policy experience who actually understands diplomacy. Trump talked a big game, but do you guys remember when the entire world laughed in his face? Well, I'll tell you what, you can trust me on this. Nobody's laughing when President Biden speaks. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way. All right, so this is what the youth-oriented hip wing of the Democratic Party, imperialist faction of the United States, command and control structure is offering. Isn't it time for better? Look around you again. The U.S. is falling apart. How many hours a week do you work? How much do you get paid? Are you happy with your situation? Can you afford a house? Can you afford to start a family? Can you afford to reach whatever goals you have in your life, whether they're traditional or non-traditional? And do you think if you're not happy with these things, as increasingly people are not, I know I'm not, that's why I'm running this channel, uh, do you think that the Democratic Party can deliver this change? If so, why haven't they done it already? I mean, Obama and Biden, this is the same guy, they were in office for eight years. Did your life get better or worse? Mine got worse. Because they didn't do anything. Bush and Cheney were in office in the 2000s for eight years, and they were met with unprecedented outrage because they started a meta war, the war on terror, that was a framework for the invasion of multiple countries. And Obama perpetuated that. And they did deregulation and they did police state legislation. And then we got the 2008 crash and we got an austerity surveillance police state. And Obama didn't change that. And on it rolls. And then we got Trump. As far as nobody laughing when Biden speaks, that's a joke, right? Biden fell asleep at the climate summit in public. It's a total joke. The man is incoherent half the time when he speaks. But it's not about Biden personally. It's about a party that has options. I mean, it's well known throughout the entire world how capitalism works, how regulations work, how alternatives to capitalism, such as socialism, which is more than just an alternative. It's the next stage after capitalism because capitalism creates a large class of working people who don't own any capital we're called proletarians. Our interest is not in private property because we don't own any. Our interest is in taking private property and collectivizing it. That's socialism. And we need to get the capitalist class out of the way in order to do that. But the capitalist class, unfortunately, has massive resources. Resources they extract from us, actually. That's the theft of our surplus value, all the things that we produce, goods and services, all that value that is above and beyond what gets paid back to us in our paycheck that they keep for themselves anyway. And then they pool it, some of those resources, and put it into the military. What do they do with that? Well, then they send that military around the world to try to make sure that this system keeps rolling and to keep expanding capitalism, to make their racket grow bigger and bigger. That's literally all they're trying to do with China. That's what China fought off. Do you know what kind of shape China would be in if they had not had their revolution? I mean, even with the rapid socialist growth that they went through, they were still poor for like a long time. But compare China to India. It's night and day. It's not even close. And that's the comparison. So the U.S. would rather go beat up poor people than concede any part of the globe to 
a more cooperative alternative to its system of plunder and exploitation. This is what this douchebag is trying to enlist your support for. Violence against other poor people. Well, join me in saying, fuck you, U.S. imperialist pig dog. I'm fighting for my own interests as a working person in unity with other working people around the world to resist empire and to resist exploitation and to build a cooperative future that doesn't involve your war machine, your murder for profit, your pollution with no regard to future generations at all. That's capitalism, and we need to end it, and we need to end it now. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, TYT, what a pile of shit. It ha- I want to say it has become, but I mean, it's. I think this has been lurking under the surface the whole time. Just, you know, as more and more crises of capitalism occur, it just gets more and more pointed, and more and more people notice it. And one of the jobs for socialists, people who have more advanced consciousness of these things, more advanced class consciousness, social consciousness, is to point it out and to help other people realize it. And to do that agitation, draw out people's complaints, educate people as to how we can solve it, and then finally organize for action, because that is what we need. We need to solve these problems, and we can do it. There are examples all around the world of working people uniting against exploitation and ending the rule of capitalists. It hasn't happened in the U.S. yet, but it can, and I think that that day is coming closer and closer. In the meantime, we have to at least hold the U.S. back from attacking other countries who are trying to build a cooperative future for their parts of the world. With that, I'm going to sign out. What do you think? Leave a comment or question below. We'll continue the discussion in the comments section, as always. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. Again, we don't run ads on this channel, so all support comes through the Patreon right now. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month. Every donation is encouraging. They're also materially helpful, so I really appreciate it. Otherwise, if you'd like to help out without a donation, liking, subscribing, leaving a comment, even if it's just good video, all that helps to boost the channel and the video in the YouTube algorithm, helps more people to see it, as does sharing on your social media. All of that is great, and I love it. Go follow on Twitter as well. I like to interact with the audience. I'm just one of you. I'm just somebody who got pissed off enough to start doing this channel. That's the difference. Really, that's it. So anyway, I enjoy uh, seeing other people out there and their contributions. Speaking of which, join an organization if there's a good one in your area. Or if you're not ready to join, maybe consider donating some resources or money or whatever it is that you have. Or start a project of your own if you have the idea and the resources to get that off the ground. And we'll catch you in the next video.